phone on speakerphone the entire time that all this transpired? David said a police officer had pulled up the house. David told me not to hang up, and he must have kept the phone near him because of what, what I could hear. respect for police officers because police officers put their lives on the line for us every day. Mr. Reisner had done that for 20 years. He got all sorts of uh, community awards for being an excellent police officer, was active in uh, victims organizations and in a local church. What happened when he was overseas? Well, uh, at first n there were no problems. Uh, he went to Kosovo where he was uh, a border guard and helped to train police officers on the border in Kosovo and really felt like he was doing a lot of good. And then he went to Iraq. Now, Iraq was a totally different situation. There were several car bombs, but there were several bombings of the compound that they were in. And uh, he was knocked unconscious several times. We're looking at his MRI here. There are some areas that are really compromised, especially when it's related to aggression or violence. How do you think his specific mental health issues impacted him right in that moment when he uh, shot the police chief? He was delusional, okay, he was angry, irritable, would be set off immediately by something that would have been uh, just a, a benign or, or insignificant um, trigger. He, I will say, snapped. Awesome 911, you need police, fire, or you have an emergency at Walmart on Palmer. A cop, an officer has been shot. He's bleeding everywhere. It's just really bad. heavy heart to have to report that we've lost a police officer this morning. The suspect took a semi-automatic pistol out of his pocket, fired at point blank, striking Officer Padron in the chest and, uh, in the, on his bulletproof vest, and another round struck Officer Padron in the neck area. So when you guys split up about four months ago, um, what what happened after that? Just, um, I felt really bad, I felt really lonely. What does the Xanax do for you? Um, it makes you really relaxed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes you lose a lot of memory. daughters won't have a father to raise them and that's a tragedy he gave his life they gave their father and we're gonna do whatever it takes
We, the jury, find the defendant, Brandon Daniel, guilty of the offense of capital murder. That is the case many times. And if they aren't involved in a situation in which the police are called and uh, that officer has no idea uh, about this person's history or that they're experiencing a mental health crisis, a lot of times that puts the officer at an extreme disadvantage. Don't bite your bite me, you're gonna jail. Don't do that. I'm going to jail. Relax. Hold on. Just calm down. So some community members said that they felt like the lady was a danger to herself or others. We're here to help you because of all the reports we've gotten, okay? I don't give a what kind of reports you got. This is somebody's loved one, and they want us to try to help them out. So uh, one option is to go against their will, and the other option is try to get them to help voluntarily. Chair calls a hearing for the Select Committee on Mental Health to order. I'm the Executive Director of the Texas Municipal Police Association. Because, as you said, Representative, that's crisis intervention we're talking about. It's already a crisis by the time law enforcement gets involved. Training our officers in how to recognize people with mental disabilities and training our officers in what services are available out there, you know, to funnel those folks into, I think that's the best we can possibly do from a law enforcement perspective. We're gonna, we're gonna take you to the dock, all right, so you can talk to somebody and try to figure it out. It's not a big deal, but if you're not coming with us, then we need to have you, all right? 40 hours uh, is the ideal uh, amount of time for training for de-escalation or uh, that type of uh, uh, circumstance. So it just becomes part of basic training? It's a no-brainer. It seemed like maybe he just felt like he could handle the situation, that it wasn't going to escalate. That's just the kind of person that Lee was. He'd take care of it and go about your business. From the officer's perspective, I would think I would like to know what people in my community might potentially be a threat. Once you finally heard who it was, did something click? Yes. Yeah, it all clicked. We were warned about him, about his antics. Get back in the car. Sit in the car, I'm going to take you to jail. You do what Okay, turn around, put your hands behind your back. Other officers come, they come to search the vehicle. Why did he even have a gun? Much less, why would he have mounted the gun to the inside of his trunk? 